And it is finally here, the complex analysis video. And um, if you're wondering why I'm holding the camera in such an awkward position, it's because my university name is right above this part, so I'm not trying to reveal that, but let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'll do is just quickly show you all the questions. So, so yeah, define a function, da -da 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 -da. find the villain imaginary parts of the function. We've got this. I'll talk about them more, a bit more in detail once I just show you all the questions. That one there as well. <clears throat> uh, I will say, um, the person that wrote this exam, my lecturer, is notorious for having horrendous weightings. Like, um, it won't make sense. The, the marks won't really scale with the difficulty of the question. It didn't really make sense. It was like that for the assignments and also for this exam. Um, we'll talk about this question being the prime example of that. Um, oh no, wait, this question being a prime, prime example of that. <clears throat> and there's this one, da, 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 da. use course Riemann equations to justify your answer. For the function, da, 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 da. not complex differentiable. Uh, let u in c be open and assume g holomorphic. And g is not equal to zero when u. Show that this map is not complex differentiable. Then just a bit of path integral stuff. Then this is about poles, I believe. Yes, poles. Then section B. Well, I should say, the way these exams are set up is, um, this exam was set up was, you had to do all of the questions in section A, so questions one to five in this paper, and then two from <clears throat> section B, and then you can attempt as many as you'd like, of course, and then um, your best two questions is what would go to your grade. So yeah, here we have, and this was a good question, consider a sequence, da -da 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 -da. For all n <clears throat> is a natural number, sorry about that. I showed that the Lorentz series, Laurent, sorry, I should say don't crucify me. Converges in the annulus in the annulus. Uh that as well. It follows from part A that the Laurent series in equation two defines a holomorphic function f in the annulus. Do determine the Laurent series for the function g of z maps to one plus f one over z. Seven is this. Uh let f the be homework function assume that for zero. Yep, next one. Uh another path integral there. Uh, in the following we still assume that f of z is not equal zero, for all z is not equal zero. But now f is holomorphic on the punctured punctured disc with a pole of finite order f z equals zero instead of a zero. Again consider the function g given by i'm going to be so honest i don't think i ever fully established the difference between a pole and a zero um i'm just keeping it a thousand there but hey, it doesn't matter now i did this exam I did, I did this exam on the 30th so coming up to two weeks now um yeah consider this function oh this is embarrassing because i'm sure that f is holomorphic on the, the, that's fine and provide the, the derivative Tell me why um, I completely forgot what the uh, quotient rule of differentiation is. So I had to guess of what I vaguely remember from when I'd last used it. But yeah, um, in this exam, I was allowed a cheat sheet. Like I said, an A4 side of two sides of an A4 sheet of paper with notes from the lectures. And I was allowed to bring that into the exam. I just didn't put it on there because I just thought, you know, it's simple differentiation. I won't forget this. I forgot it. But yeah, we're here now. I'm sure that F can be written in the form. This was fine, actually. This wasn't too bad from what I remember. And then we have here. Oh, this was embarrassing. I had this formula on my um, cheat sheet, but I used this formula wrong. Um, see how that power is 2 there? Yeah, I forgot to factor in the 2 when using the formula. Yeah, embarrassing. And then question 9, which I don't even want to talk about that much because I didn't even attempt it. Thank the Lord I don't have to do this one. This one looks horrendous. Um, consider a function with a Laurent series of the form Z, where W and C is less than 1. Now that the principal part is a finite sum, assume the auxiliary part in equation 3 converges for all Z in C. Let gamma go from 0 to 1 map to the complex plane. Be given by gamma of T is defined as E to the, I think that says I 2 pi T. Compute that path integral. 
yeah that, that hint was never gonna help me and then some more nonsense for this but now i'll go through how the paper went just in general so <clears throat> Uh, this one was fine you know that's just um as uh, so you sub in z equals that and then you use a complex conjugate you know rationalize the denominator that was fine this one now if you have seen the last video i made um on the night before my exam my i believe i showed a past paper that had this literally this exact question on it and um i was able to figure out part a which is way more than four marks worth of working, by the way, but we'll get into that later. I was able to figure out part A. For the life of me, part B was not working. And the exact same thing happened again. I was able to do part A, but like a bit quicker this time because, you know, I knew what step was coming next. Then part B, I attempted it, and it just wasn't making sense. Like, what part did I not get? I think I was stuck on um, the fact that, like, because, of course, you can bring these derivatives um, inside for um, the Cauchy-Riemann Cauchy equations. But um, I thought to myself, hang on a minute, but it's of it's a, fun it's a function of Tx and Ty. So do I differentiate with respect to Tx or just x? I, I was confused on that one. So yeah, um, and I had all people that had done the paper, that had done this question, and it said that this part took them, uh, oof, I think it was two or three pages of work for four marks out of 100 doesn't make sense does it like i said is it's like this in the assignments um each in the first assignment um each question was worth seven marks some of them took much much longer than others like one was just i'm um, calculating simple derivatives of like one over x another one was proving that um a plane was open or something like some set was open i think yeah that was crazy but um yeah, assuming that f is holomorphic, show that uh, <clears throat> df by dz equals f of z for all that in c. Hint, you can use that proof that. Yeah, I heard that was a bit ugly as well, but I didn't try that, so I lost those eight marks. Oh, well. Um, and this question, this was just fine, honestly. It was just subbing into the equations, literally. You know, showing that you have ux equals vy and uy equals minus vx. Still got it. Um, with this one... Uh, yeah, just showing that they weren't um, satisfied in those simple stuff. This one was fine as well. Um, I believe we had, it was either this exact function in this path integral or something very similar um, in a past paper. But um, we don't really have answers for past papers. So, yeah, um, all I could do was assume that I had done it right the first time. Um, I believe me and many of us got the same ones for this one, so I can't be mad. Yeah, not a bad question. Uh, ah, now this one. Um, consider a holomorphic function f from u to c. Suppose that u is the punctured disk with radius 1. Define what it means for f to have a pole of order n at 0. What did I say for this question? I definitely had it written down on my sheet of notes. Um, but I believe I said it can be written um, that... The function that, that this means the function can be written as um oh as either z minus ooh, um oh z to the n times another function or z to the minus n. I think I said z to the minus n because that makes more sense. Um, yeah, I think that's what I said for that. Suppose you did uh, is the disk is the unit disk assume and assume f has. A zero of order n at zero. Yeah, as I said, couldn't tell you what the hell the zero is. I show that the function da, 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 has a pole of order n at zero. Um, how did I do this one? Oh yeah. Um, I think I said uh, let I don't know. Um, f of z equal uh, h of h of z times z to the minus n. Then I just um, reciprocated both sides really yeah that was all i could do and i just said bob's your uncle next question this one was so amazing because this a very similar question was on the second assignment and but instead of a lambda there um it was a three i want to say 
And of course, for that second assignment, they did release a solutions eventually. So, yeah, it's not a hard question. And the solution was in my mind, basically, anyway. So, yeah, this, um, that was fine. It's just subbing into there, a bit of um, rearranging and using the fact that the geometric series um, uh, converges uh, when Z, the mod of Z is, uh, when mod Z is less than one, fine. And then, then this one, uh, yeah, the annulus of convergence is effectively just the reciprocal of these numbers. So yeah, not one over zero, but um, yeah, one over lambda and then just one. So yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Um, seven, uh, I attempted this one as well. I did three questions in section B actually, I did six, seven, and eight. Um, I'll get to eight actually in a little bit, but let's just stick with this one. Uh, let f be a holomorphic function, assume that f of zero equals zero. And yeah, I thought like they could have summarized this a bit quicker, but hey, whatever. Consider the function g on the punctured disk to c, given g of z is defined as f dash over f. Show that there exists an n in the holomorphic function h, so that g of z equals n over z plus h of z, for z does not equal zero. What kind of isolated singularity does g have at zero? Now for this one, um, uh, what did I do for this one? Oh my lord, my mind is blanking. What did I do for this one? Uh, hmm, I've completely forgotten. I think I am... Um, I think I said that since f of zero equals zero, this must have a pole um, at zero of order n. And then um, I think I rewrote g of z as like in the form of z to the minus n times another function. I might be misremembering myself completely, but I'm gonna look at the next part. Uh, let gamma be a counterclockwise counter path around the unit circle centered at zero. Oh yeah, that was just a simple um, uh, path integral that I got wrong, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, I got a different one wrong. Yeah, I got this one wrong, actually. Yeah, that's, we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, in the following, we will still assume that, duh, 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 but now f is holomorphic on the punctured disk with the pole of final order at z equals zero, z over zero. Lord knows what the difference is. Um, if someone could tell me, that would be great, actually. Again, consider the function g, given by the da, 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 da. So that there exists an n and a holomorphic function. See, I'm pretty sure I did what I did here. It's same what I did for question five, like said that um, you can rewrite, um, oh, uh, no, is that what I did? No, I said, um, let g of z equal z to the minus n times another function of z uh, and then I subbed, now I said let f of z equal that, I subbed that into there, simplified, and you got this, I believe. I think so, where h of z is like um, some random function. Uh, my phone on low battery. Oh, that's not what I wanted to happen. Oh, did I make everything go dark? Oh, I hope this doesn't look weird. Okay, that's the best we can do for now. Um... Okay, consider the function, da 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 da, da. See, so this quotient rule that I may have misremembered, couldn't tell you, um, wasn't too bad. Uh, this one, what did I do for this one? Oh, yeah, use the hint. Um, so, yeah, um, you can rewrite cos, uh, that's the um, Taylor expansion of, of cos to the second term, I believe. I've not looked at Taylor expansions in a long time. But yeah, you just throw that into there. Um, and yeah, I believe that just simplifies down to something like this, where the h of z is this, um, is that over z to the four. But I was thinking, doesn't that mean you kind of ignore um, terms of this order and higher? So can you really, can I really say that, you know, because it's being ignored, but it's being ignored, but again, too late now. The fat lady is already saying. And yeah, yes, the ever so simple path integral that I um, miscalculated. I got the path integral to be, oh, was it zero in the end? I do not know. Um, it couldn't have been zero. 
No, I couldn't have gone it to be zero because there's clearly a singularity at zero there, which means, which is in um, the circle we're looking at. So I wouldn't have made that mistake. Did I get two pi i in the end? I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, man, I got that wrong. Um, do I waste time talking about question nine? Because I don't even know what it's asking. I know what it's asking, but I can't do it. But yeah, there it is again in case you want to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I'm not, I never claim to be good at analysis. But yeah, that sums up the complex paper. Uh, next will be vector calculus that I'm going to literally record immediately after I upload this one. So yeah.